Hey, what's up guys? How we doing? How about that San Diego round? I can't believe we actually had a dry round. Dirt works, miracle workers. But before we get into it guys, I want to thank EBC Brakes. EBCBrakes.com. They've been with me for a long time. They got the best rotors, brake pads, clutches, you name it. The guys at EBC got you covered. Epic Garage Designs. Check them out at EpicGarageDesigns.com. If you need a rack, you need motor tracks for your garage, and if you want to win one, head over to the YouTube channel, comment on the time lapse video, and you're automatically entered to win a Moto Tracks over on Epic Garage Designs. Complete Racing Solutions, or as my buddy Lane says, can't remember. Yeah, this is, this is Coach Rob. Coach Rob's awesome. He is by far the smartest guy in the motorsports that I know of as far as training, as far as recovery. Um, he's a genius. So if you want to start a program, starts at about 20 bucks, goes all the way up to 500, depending on what kind of results you want and how serious you take this. So without further ado, let's get into this. I don't know exactly who I am. I forgot to say, and I have to say, or else I don't get a ton of subscribers. I don't get nearly any subscribers. So if you guys could, if you've already subscribed, thank you. Um, I work really hard on these videos. They take a lot of time, and it helps me a lot if you subscribe. So I would appreciate it. Um, but let's get into this. The track, Dirt Works. Literally, those guys are magic. I have no idea. They must have worked day, night, pumping the water out of that stadium. If you saw what it looked like the week before with the monster trucks and the fact that they completely rebuilt it and gave epic conditions, kudos to Dirtworks. The track was awesome. Um, the only issue I had with it, well, first off, I want to talk about what's good. I love the off-camber first turn. That's brilliant. That actually adds more separation before they hit the rhythm section, which is kind of safe. Did it have some guys kind of having issues in the first turn? Yes, but none of the issues because of the off camber were bad. The big issues were a different issue. Um, I was kind of disappointed that the flat turn was turned into two 90s instead of pulled all the way back by the starting line like it was originally supposed to. Um, but I guess, you know, sometimes logistics are what they are and it looks good on paper. It probably just didn't work out. Um, the other thing that I really don't like are whoop de doos after a double to where they can get like a third, fourth gear run in on them. That's dangerous. I'm sorry. Look how many guys went down. Look how much speed they had going through there. I like the whoops right out of a turn, particularly a turn with an inside line that doesn't let you skim them and an outside line that does. So if you go outside to skim them, a guy can pass you. If you go for the pass and don't make it, that guy skims and he's gone. So it really makes for a lot of strategy when you do it that way. And then if you want to have that little double, have it at the end of the whoops so the guys can just kind of, if you have momentum, you hit the double. If you don't, you don't. So anyway, other than that, great track, dirt works, amazing job. Um, one other little complaint. I love the FR stuff that the Club MX guys are wearing, but Club MX, can we put them in different color helmets? Like, I get confused. Uh, especially when they do the split screens and two, and I can't tell who's Phil and Enzo. If you could just put a different color helmet, I understand the branding and what, the, what these brands want to do is they have a new colorway. They really want to promote it. So what they do is they put everyone in the same color so you have recognition. Works great. All I'm asking is do something a little different on the helmets so that I know who's who. Keep doing your branding. That works great. But just put Phil in a different color helmet as Enzo. That's it. Same with the Pro Circuit guys and Star guys. Just change the helmet. Give one guy, you know, hey, say, you know, Phil always wears a red helmet, or Phil always wears a blue helmet, or Phil wears the lighter helmet, and Enzo wears the dark, or something like that. You can, you can kind of have their own signature, per se. They can still have their own little personality. Um, 250s. Max Voland. i got to start with Max. Um, you guys know I'm a huge Max Voland fan, and I was so gutted for him last night. That, after all the shit he took last year, um, when he didn't make you know, the main events or night shows, and it's just like, this This hurts. You cannot be a Red Bull KTM factory rider and not make the main. You just can't, especially at his level, his third year. This isn't his first year. This is his third year. In the third year, you can't do that. And I understand that's probably what was going through his head after those mistakes where he got forced into the LCQ. So once you hit that LCQ, you just go in there, and you, you, you should own those guys as a factory rider, he rode not to lose, and when you ride not to lose, you always lose. When you're worried about a mistake, what do you do? You make a mistake. He needed to go out there and just put it down, 
and just look at it as, okay, now I got some practice. He should have just put it to those guys flat out. I mean, in a head-to-head -head matchup between Hunter Yoder, nothing against Hunter Yoder, he's a bad dude, but put him and Max Volan head-to-head, -head, who do you got? Come on. Hunter Yoder won that LCQ, which props to him, but come on, Max. It, it, that's just not... I really wish I could get, man, and I actually, I reached out to Talon and I asked him because I feel like I see a lot of me and Max, not in the talent-wise, but in the, the heads, the squirrely headspace. Um, I really think I could help walk him through this and oh, just had to make sure my mic was still on. I don't I hate having to record these things three times when I forget to turn the mic on. Yeah, that's happened. Um, but I, I, just, I just think I could help him walk him through it and tell him, you know, hey, I've been through this. You've got to just go for it. If you're going to crash and not make the main, you're going to crash and not make the main. But the way he did it looked really bad, and it's unacceptable no matter what. So, yeah, I hope, I hope Max can rebound from this. It's very, very important that this does not happen again all year, and he needs to get some good results. Um, a podium, a second, a first, everybody forgets this, but he needs that podium bad, especially after that. So, Jet. Jet is just on a level above himself. His race craft is above anyone that I've ever seen. Like, I don't remember anyone being able to just manage the race like he does. He gets out front, and once he gets out front, he just rides what he needs to. Somebody catches him, he just drops his half second, just like that. Um, it, it, he's so wise above his years. I can't wait till he gets to the 450 class. It, you know, I don't know. I mean, he's going so fast. He's like the second fastest guy out there behind Eli on a 250. Uh, he looks good. RJ looked great. Um, he really was hammering it. He's, he's a lunatic. Him and McAdoo both are a couple lunatics that want to win, and they will not accept second place. At some point, one of these two lunatics is going to take a shot at Jet. I'm just wondering when it will be. I mean, if you look at McAdoo after that race, he was pissed. Don't get me wrong. He's probably pissed that RJ got him towards the end, but neither of those dudes is fine just being, being Jet's number two or number three. It's, it's interesting. Enzo Lopes, the breakout star. Um, he looks like a guy who could easily podium. He looks like the talent that I've heard he had years ago. And I heard a lot of people tell me in the off season, I got some connections over near Club MX, and they're telling me Enzo looks good. But I also, the same, the same people tell me, he doesn't work as hard as they probably think he should. And it shows. Because after lap five, his lap times dropped off considerably. Um, and he looks a little bit, I mean, it's hard to judge these guys in some of that compression gear. Some guys are bigger than others, but he looks like he's been eating a little too much Brazilian, uh, Brazilian barbecue. So Enzo, you have a chance to be a podium winner. Like you could be a, a Supercross champion from Brazil. How badass is that? So put your head down. Um, I look for him. He's probably going to sign with somebody else next year, pro circuit star. Like don't think that they don't see, you know, what he's doing right now, although Club MX has proven they're probably better than Star this year, at least for right now. Uh, I think that's an anomaly, but it is what it is. But if you compare Enzo and the guys he's going against for those podiums, RJ Hampshire and, and those guys, they don't drop off at the end of the race. They're just as, I mean, Hampshire's a savage. He's not going to give an inch. His, his lap times were almost the same. You can't go five laps and then cruise and be on the podium. Top five, yeah, you can do that, but if you want to make that next jump, you're going to have to get in better shape. Pierce Brown, really glad to see him out there. He looked really good. Um, that was a bad crash he had at Anaheim. He probably still shouldn't have been racing because of the head injury, but he was, went well, good for him, got a result, got a full main event. Um, props to the Utah guy. Uh, I appreciate it. Um, Styles Robertson, really, the star guys have got to be pissed. You cannot go star as much like Red Bull KTM. They're not okay with just riding around. They're not okay with 5th, 7th, ninth. They're a team that's used to podiums and wins. And I have to believe after Anaheim, they were probably a little bit embarrassed. Um, and with Club MX handling them, they're supposed to be the number one Yamaha team. They're not. Um, both Phil and Enzo are doing better than the star guys. They really are. They're, they're, you know, if you're doing team versus team, Club's carrying the Yamaha banner in the 250 class, and that's not... That can't sit well over at Star. It just can't. Um, you can tell the tension. And, you know, they had that incident in the start where Levi tried to chop over. At the same time, Enzo got squirrely and went a little bit right, which took everyone out. It was un unfortunate. Uh, Styles had a good ride, got back up there. But still, 
you can't have that and be on the star Yamaha. So I do believe with incidents like this and the one from Forkner last week, it's time to change the starts, people. The 125s in 1990 used the same format. Line them all up and send them in. Problem is, is these bikes are so fast. They're anchoring them down so they're just like launching off that metal grate. They're going so much faster than they used to go. And it's causing some serious problems. I mean, some, we're having some big wrecks. That's two races. Two stars we're probably going to lose. I don't know about Kitchen. I haven't got the report yet. But Forkner, Kitchen. Two races, two riders. Could we just drop one every, every race in the start? At what point do we move this to a two-row road racer style uh, start where you do 10 in the front row, 10 in the back row, and then stagger them like this? Come on, guys. It's time. I want to see these guys race. I want to see the top 10 guys, the fastest guys, get out front without having somebody who qualified 20th get in the mix and you know have a big gap. I want to see the best versus the best. So hopefully we'll get there. I, I do believe it's time to do that. Um, <clears throat> but moving on past that, 450s. Chase Sexton and that, that gas tank, that was gnarly. Once again, whoops at the end of like a straightaway. You cannot have a nasty section of whoops where you can hit them going 40 miles an hour. You just can't. It's dangerous. Guys are going to get hurt. Colby Cop got hurt. We're lucky nobody else got hurt major. I mean, Kate Clayson, I mean, so many guys had an issue right there. Yes, it's challenging. Yes, they're the best riders on earth. But put those whoops right out of a turn. Make it so that you have to go outside to skim them or you go inside and jump and you have to choose which one. It makes a little more strategy, a little more passing, um, and it's, it's safer. Love the Barsha incidents. I love Barsha. I love Anderson. I love their personalities. I love that um, Anderson <laughs> calls them out. Um, Direct Motocross got a little shot of it afterward. And it didn't look like Barsha said much. I'm sure he probably said something. I don't think Anderson would tweet that if he didn't say something. But I love Barsha just going, oh, I don't know. I never said anything. I thought it was a great move. That's so awesome. I think it's funny. That's the best way he could have played it. But Barsha's weird. He's like a video game character where if you're racing with him and every time you take a guy out, you get like boost. Once he gets into these incidents, he feeds off of it. And I mean, that's why he had such a good night. He just, that's Bam Bam. Bam Bam needs controversy. Bam Bam needs to run into people. He needs to feel like the gloves are off. And hey, I said he'd taken a step back this year. It looks like maybe I was wrong. Um, maybe he just needed to ram some people. Um, Malcolm looked unstoppable in his heat race. The way he caught and passed Ken Roxon on the Suzuki. Suzuki? Is it the best bike? So you guys think? Anyway, uh, he, he just can't put it together in the main. I think he will. He will. Um, if he doesn't get hurt, man, he's got some big crashes. Big, big crashes. Yes, he's one of the most durable guys I've ever seen. But at some point, when you have this many huge crashes, you, something breaks. Um, I, I really hope that doesn't happen, but... Back to the main event, um, Adam Cincerillo. We got to see his potential. Adam Cincerillo leading laps. It looked so awesome. I was so happy. I don't know about you guys, but I was pumped. Adam Cincerillo led a race, showed us his potential. And his lap times dropped off because I've heard about the fourth or fifth lap is when his hand goes numb. But he was still able to, I mean, he dropped about a half a second a lap when a lot of the other guys weren't dropping on that track. That track seemed to not fade away as, as much as some tracks do. And he dropped back a few spots, but he still rode really good. Maybe it's getting better, guys. Maybe this nerve is just, nerves do weird things. Maybe it's coming around. I don't know. I'm just crossing my fingers, hoping that that's the case, because everybody loves Adam Cincerillo, and the sport's better when he's better. Uh, Tomac, oh my gosh, he's so good. He looks like one of the dominant riders from years past, back when the sport wasn't you know, as close at the top, when you'd get one guy that just dominated, a la Carmichael, McGrath, Stewart. Um, that's what it feels like right now. It feels like one of those eras where it's Tomax, unless he does something stupid. It's Tomax, unless the bike breaks. It's just where they're at. I mean, Webb looked about as good as you could possibly look and got beat. I'm like, damn. So, and then back to Roxon. I want to talk about Caddy Jim. Caddy Jim is in the comments section. Did exactly what I've been asking you guys to do. I don't mind if you disagree with my opinion. And Caddy disagrees with me about the Suzuki. He says, I believe, 
hopefully I'm correct in reading the way you said this. You're telling me that don't blame the Suzuki. Roxon hasn't been a contender for quite some time. And then you, sh you got a series of statistics to back this up. And you make a hell of a case, Jim. But, but, two key stats that you overlooked here. 2020, he was third. Going into Utah, he had a real shot at that thing. So, contender. 2021, he finished second. Contender. 2022, eh, he had to leave. It was out. But in this offseason, he beat Tomac head-to-head, -head, which makes me think he could be back in the contender category. And on the Suzuki, he's just not. I mean, fourth is great, um, and that's where he's at in points, but every other year he's had the red plate. He's been up there battling up until the end. He, has he closed it out? No. But he's been, he's been a contender. Now he's not a contender. He's in the Barsha mix. The, you know, he's in that three to five, three to seven range. Um, you're going to see him. I'm, I'm sure he'll get a podium or two because he's just too good. I mean, it's Ken Roxon. But that bike's just a touch off. It really is. And you know what? Maybe it's getting better. Maybe I'm wrong. So, but I don't think so. Um, but I love the way you broke this down, Caddy Jim. Touche, my man. Touche. Sexton. I'm not sure what's happening with Sexton. I've never seen him in his career. He hasn't showed those flashes of speed that we saw last year. And he looks to be fading towards the end of the race. I don't know if he was hurt from that crash. But at Anaheim, he faded, and at this round, he faded. And that's just so unlike him. I'm curious. I wonder if last season's outdoor and that just epic battle he had with Tomac took it out of his body. He seems to have bulked up. Did he add too much muscle? Is it becoming um, a hindrance at this point? Does he need to slim back down? I don't know. But whatever he's doing, it's not working. Um, and he needs to kind of figure that out. Uh, Ferrandis, he still looks good. Um, but you expect more, being that he was a past national champion outdoors. So we'll see. Um, obviously, his bike's good. I mean, you can't argue the bike when Tomac's smashing everybody. Um, Anderson, boy, he's got to be frustrated because I think he's as good or better than last year when he was winning races and he was third. And I just don't think he had, he just didn't have enough for Tomac and, and Webb. And then he went down and then, you know, he had the Barsha incident. I think he's getting a little frustrated. Um, I wouldn't count out El Ombre yet, but he needs something pretty quickly. Uh, so we'll see. But anyway, guys, so that's it for the San Diego wrap-up. Thank you for watching. Remember to subscribe, and I will catch you guys later.